I'll read the scripture. Don't worry about standing this morning. The Holy Spirit is in the place. I thank God for that. Amen. The word of God comes from John 10. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. It's coming from John 10, and I'll read from the message Bible for the benefit of the children. Amen. Amen. Let me set this before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over through the fence of a sheep pen instead of going through the gate, you know he's up to no good. A sheep rustles. The shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognizes his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. That's right. That's right. They won't follow a stranger's voice, but will scatter because they aren't used to the sound. Say that. Say that. The word of God. Amen. 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 First, give an honor to the Lord and Savior of my life, who has ordained me, who has blessed me, who has crucified me through the word of God. I thank you, God, for choosing me, for trusting me. I thank you for my mother in her absence. I thank you for your prayers, I am healed. I thank you for my husband who's in the house with me today. Yes, I thank you. We thank you for your prayers. Yes. On behalf of um, our deacons and our trustees and our mothers and everybody in their appointed places, my my men, my brothers and sisters, my brother and sister in the ministry. Amen. 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 My mom in the ministry. Um, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. One of my all-time favorite series, nope, stop. Gracious Father, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to stand before your congregation once again, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you sit me down, Father, and allow your Holy Spirit to come forth. Rest, rule, and abide upon me, Lord God, so that I may bring forth the word that you have given, Lord God. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be all acceptable unto you, Lord God, and therefore we know the people will be pleased. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 One of my all-time favorite series is From the Oh, yes. I am one that like action movies. And espionage type yes. movies. Yes. 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 You know, I like that. I like the comedy movies too, but I like that action. And Criminal Minds revolves around an elite team of FBI profilers who analyzes the country's most twisted criminal minds. And mind you, I do work for the federal government, so keep that in mind as well. Yeah. <laughs> they anticipate their next moves of the criminals before they have an opportunity to strike again. Criminal Minds, the team name is a Behavioral Analysis Unit. It's a BAU. There are eight personalities that are associated with Criminal Minds. The Criminal Minds team is comprised of eight distinct characters that play a vital part in the process of solving cases. Their dedication to using their expertise to pinpoint predators' motivations and identify their emotional triggers in the attempt to stop them is impressive. <clears throat> However, without each of the cast members, the cases would really travel south fast. <clears throat> the preference of any team is to be timely and successfully to prevent loss of life, bodily harm, or worse, death. 
Much like the criminal mind team, Christ has formulated a team here within the kingdom. He has ordained and appointed pastors, deacons, trustees, mothers, fathers, children, Lottie Dottie and everybody to play a part in the upbuilding of his kingdom. But prior to doing so, everyone has to be in their perspective places and clinging to the ministry and or space of which they are assigned. I bring up this series and speak about the intricacies of their positions within the group, not as a backdrop of their expertise or to woo you into my interest of my favorite shows, but to remind you, or should I say us, of all of the importance of knowing our place and positioning in ministry. Together, we can do much more than we can apart. As humans, we are so security oriented, whether it is conscious or not. We all require a need and want to be or be secure in our lives, amen? amen? Think about a newborn baby. Even though they have never been physically held or touched until they're touched by the doctor, the nurse, or the mother, the very first touch stimulates the continued need of having to cling to something or someone else for security. That's right. From the time we are born, we are clinging to something. Zion here, I stopped by today to tell you, it's okay to cling, yes. just as long as you're in the right place and you're clinging to the right thing, or should I say, to the right person. That's right. How many of you know that your own insecurities tend to get the way to get in the way of what is best for us all. Or I need to have more because of our insecurities and trusting the promises of Christ. We get into our own heads where the little people of ours, you know, I call them the little people of ours, where's that? And we begin to allow ours to tell us that what we know to be true isn't and what isn't truthful is. But as some of us has and continue to witness is that when we are holding on to Jesus, you see the you see how the word came together with the music this morning? Yeah. And on to Jesus, that's when we are holding on to real hope. And when and when we do, our insecurities become secure. Because we have the assurance of Christ. Zion here, what are you clinging to? Have you found this place of assurance and security in the kingdom? Do you know what it looks like or what it feels like? Do you have an idea? Do you ask yourself those questions? Well, if you didn't before and you have today, I'm glad you asked. In this sacred place, you will have a place of security. Insecurity, where is security? In his hands. In his word, he said in John 10, 28 and 29, and I give unto them eternal life, and they should never perish. Neither shall I have any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father who is giving them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand, out of my Father's hand. See, Jesus says, I told you, but you don't believe. Everything I have done has been authorized by my Father. Actions that speak louder than words. You know how some people, they always tell you what they're going to do, but never move? God, that's not the God that we serve. He's a man of action. You don't believe because you're not his sheep. The Word just said, you got to know his voice. That's right, that's right. So if you're not believing and you're hearing, then you're not a sheep. My sheep recognizes my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them real and eternal life. They are protected from the destroyer for good. No one can steal them from out of my hand. The father who put them under my care is so much greater than the destroyer. Yes. No one could ever get them away from him. I yes. am the father 
of a heart and a mind. What else is in a sacred place? He provides a place of strength. Where is that strength? On his shoulder. Luke 15 and 5, and when he had found it, he lay it on his shoulders rejoicing. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and lost one. Would you leave? Would you leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that one lost right. sheep right. until you found it? When you found it, can you be sure you would put it across your shoulders, rejoicing? And when you got home, you would call your friends and neighbors. You know how we do. Man, I lost that one sheep and I found it. Man, it was back up in the cup. Right. And I found it. That's money, man. Count on it. There's more joy. It's just a little bit of joy. That little bit of joy can bring you a whole thousands of thousands of thousands of angels. Mothers and fathers, can you imagine the devastation of losing one of your babies? And how feverishly you would search for them? I don't care what they're doing. It's called an unconditional love. And the shepherd is the same way with his sheep. You will create your own BAU, your behavior analysis unit, team to find your child. They would just be called auntie and uncle, best friend, play cousin, and maybe whosoever. Amen? And in that sacred place, you also have, a, aside from a place of security, a place of strength, you have a place of learning. Amen. That learning is in his bosom. John 13 and 25, he then lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? The bosom is the breast or chest area of the body. It is also poetically considered to be the place where our feelings reside. Whenever a baby cries or when we speak poignantly to our children, we tend to bring them close and lean in to correct or direct. We have the same comfort in Christ. We can thank him daily for coming to save us from something that's so far outside of our comfort zone. You just gotta thank him for putting you in your uncomfortability. Why? Because he trusts that we're going to heed to the instructions that lie within. Yes, yes. Those instructions are directions that only he should provide for a successful and timely mission completion. During the last episode of Criminal Minds, two of the profilers shared a special moment after being rescued by the rest of the team. One was an Army Ranger and one was a Navy Sailor. And the Army Ranger thanked the Navy sailor for saving him. And then the sailor did the same. The Army Ranger creed is, and we as soldiers in the Army of the Lord can adopt as well, that we are to leave no man or woman behind. Because we are in covenant relationship with Christ together. And as for me and my house, I will not leave a fallen comrade to fall into the hands of the enemy. And then I can take it a bit further like these two did. Though their paths may have been different, the creeds and the covenants remain the same for the both of them. I will draw on every remaining once of ounce of strength to protect my teammates to accomplish my mission. I don't want to mess that up. I'm going to go back to that. Even though they took different paths, they still had the same mission completion creed. That they would draw on every remaining ounce of strength to protect their teammate to accomplish the mission. Zion Hill, no matter what position we're sitting in, we are part of the team. We are soldiers in this army. We stand with our deacons. We stand with our trustees. We stand with our mothers. We stand one with the other. We cannot do absolutely 
truly anything without one another. He's pulling us closer into his bosom for direction so that he can provide that direction to us. And that learning that we need so that when our shepherd is here, we won't lead him astray. In this sacred place, we have a place of security, we have a place of strength, we have a place of learning, but most importantly, we have a place of communion. Yes. Yes. Where is that communion? It's at his feet. Luke 10 and 39, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Christ always shows us what is best by steering us to what is most important. Christ compares the worries of Martha of that of Mary and shows Martha that Mary has the peace. While she, <laughs> Mary was running around and doing, Martha was running around doing everything. That's right. Mary had peace. peace. She was busy, mm -hmm. but she didn't have any peace. And Christ said only one thing is needed. With that one remark, he said, Mary has chosen what is better. That's right. That's right. And it will not be taken away from her. <laughs> you know how we're trying to fix something? And God said, just rest. Amen. He didn't tell you to get up and fix absolutely anything. He said, just rest. <laughs> You're trying to go around and make lists and um, collaborate with this person and that person to force something. You can't force a circle. Say, 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 say. Come on. The language of the passage recalled in Deuteronomy 8 and 3, in a sense, Mary is prepared to partake in the right meal. Mm -hmm. We're trying to fix the meal, and the meal has already been prepared. All right. <laughs> What she has done by sitting at Jesus' feet will remain with her forever. That meal is forever nourishing. That meal will last. Jesus is not so much condemning Martha's activity as commending Mary's. He is saying that her priorities are in order. To the disciples, Jesus says to us, sit at my feet and devour my teaching. There is no more important meal. As I hear, I don't have a whole lot of hollering and screaming and grunting and all that kind of stuff for you this morning. It's just simple. You have to be in a sacred place. Sebastian Hunger states that battle buddies learn during war or challenges that only that the only thing that makes battle psychologically tolerable is the brotherhood amongst the soldiers. It's the relationship amongst the soldiers that makes the cohesiveness and the, the wind even more sweeter. So as my battle buddies, Zion Hill, we are one another's battle buddies. We have to grab a hold to his hand for security. We have to use his shoulders as our foundation. We have to use his bosom as our confirmation and direction and his feet where you will find the fullness of his communion. Yeah. Criminal minds had special agents, but so does Christ. They are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. I don't know what you are struggling with today, but I know a man that, that his hand, his shoulders, his bosom, and feet can carry you exactly where you need to be. His name is Jesus. Will you trust him? Will you trust him? If you are without a church home and you have challenges and you don't have an unconditional love and you need to a firm foundation. Uh -huh. yeah. You need a hand to hold. Yeah. Because I know there's some single women out here that say, you know, I just want a warm body. Yeah. But there's nobody like Jesus. Amen. Until he sends you a body. Amen. You don't want just anybody. Amen. Because it might be a dead body. 
you need somebody who's going to be God directed. Amen. Amen. But I'm not just talking to the single women. I'm talking to the single men as well. All right. You don't want just shimmy shimmy. Come on. You don't want just anybody that's going to turn on a tree. My dad said you can't turn a trick into a tree. All right. That goes both ways. So if you're looking for a firm foundation, you're looking for a hand to hold, you're looking for a heart to listen to, you have Jesus. You have the fullness of his communion. If you are without a church home and you have challenges, let's let's go into prayer.